Good afternoon, everybody. Live and direct from House Onik, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with our brand new video astronomy blog. Well, not exactly brand new. It has been around for a while, but we have been kind of doing new and improving things to it. So if you'd like to stop by for more about what's going on with astronomy and science and all kinds of things like that, this is Skyblog3. Welcome aboard. If you have any questions or suggestions, write down here. This is the email address, austin.onik at wreg.com. Feel free to let me know what you're thinking, what you think we should be adding on to here. We would love to hear from you, so definitely want to let us know a little bit more about what you think about this. This is your astronomy blog. What do you want to see on here? Well, I don't know that unless you tell me, so that's something you should uh, think about and let me know on things like that. Just underneath the email address, a little bit farther down, you can see, again, the cascading waterfall display. That is from livemeteors.com as we record this, and if I had the sound up, which I hope is not the case at this time, I think I turned it off, but if you hear sort of that cascade uh, noise that's background kind of like static sound uh, if that's on there what that is again there's a couple of those bright lines that just showed up right about there just going down the screen those were more than likely a couple of meteors smacking into the atmosphere burning up and then the trail that they leave behind that gas and dust being ionized the atoms being ripped apart that reflects the energy from the radar back to the radar site and that's what you see on screen down here as as meteors, as those sound notes uh, that you hear when you listen to this website, and yeah, you can listen to meteors very cool thing to take a look at. This is really neat because, again, it sends out the signals from the side, bounces off those trails, and you can see a little bit more about how these meteors, how often they hit the atmosphere within view of this meteor site. So if you'd like to listen to meteors, even when it's cloudy, even when it's raining here in the Mid-South, this right here is a good place to go to to get more information. Again, you can watch the display right down beneath us here at livemeteors.com if you'd like to keep up to date with what's going on there. Let's go ahead and see what's going on across the Mid-South area. We are again just about sunset within a couple of hours so again a very nice evening but unfortunately a lot of clouds out there so again what we're seeing on the day and night world map showing the sun making its way back over to uh, the far east and back into around the area just coming our way will be a nearly full moon which is currently over Sri Lanka and the Indian Ocean at this time currently looking again at a decent amount of daylight time, 13 hours and one minute in the red bar near the bottom of the screen. That's the solar data for Memphis and the Mid-South area. So 6.30 a.m. the sunrise time today, 7.31 the sunset time later on tonight. And again, 13 hours and one minute worth of daylight today. On the lunar, or pardon me, on the Mars rover, taking a look around the area of Mars a couple of days ago. Again, hasn't been updated yet. Should be updated somewhere in the next couple of days. Uh, the Remote Environmental Monitoring Station, or RE MS picking up an air temperature of 23 degrees. Uh, that's again positive. That's uh, air temperature. Low temperature of 103 degrees below zero. So an incredible display of temperatures out there from cold to exceptionally very cold out there. And ground temperatures in the area of the Mars rover. Let's get that back from Kelvin to Fahrenheit. 57 degrees the maximum ground temperature. 153 degrees below zero the minimum temperature. If you'd like to see more about this data, all you have to do is go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory website at mars.nasa.gov for more information about what's going on in and around the area of Mars with Curiosity rover still working away and still doing a good job. Moon data at this time, it is a waning gibbous. It's 94% illuminated when you see it later on tonight, if you see it with the clouds out there. Moon will be rising tonight at about 9.53 and will set tomorrow morning at about 8.09. We've already had full moon just a couple of days ago, so that will be heading our way a little bit later on as the moon goes back toward its new phase coming up in the next few days. Things are quiet where it comes to uh, solar storms. We don't have a lot going on at this point in time. Nothing major showing up at this time in and around the area from space weather. This is from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Yes, there is such a thing. Uh, if you'd like to know more, go to swpc.noaa.gov uh, for more information about what's going on uh, in and around the Mid-South there. Let me just make certain that I'm not getting the Okay, no background hiss. It must be, must be my computer that's acting up with the noise at this time. So not getting that from the meteor display right down underneath. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. 
in and around the Mid-South where it comes to anything involving uh, stargazing for tonight. Most of what we're seeing, again, is relatively clear, but from here tonight, from where I'm sitting at, there are more clouds popping up, but they will be sticking around throughout the afternoon and evening. Now, through tonight, about the time we hit about uh, sunset, there will be, again, more clear conditions over toward the Tennessee River. Let me see if I can get that set right there. There we go. Toward about the uh, Tennessee River, Jackson, 24% sky cover, 24 around Tupelo. The far Further back you go to the west, that's where we see again the possibility of more cloud cover out there, and that's at about 7 o'clock tonight. Going to, again, the early evening hours, overnight, a few more clouds here and there, mainly back to the west of the river. East of the Mississippi River, we see a few clouds, but still possible to get some interference out there when it comes to anything involving cloud cover. Likewise, on the page from the National Weather Service, it's called a meteogram. If you've never seen one of these before, very handy for getting an idea as to what's going on uh, with the forecast. And what we're seeing here, again, with the blue line, that is the amount of cloud cover out there. Humidity in the green, precipitation percentage down toward the brown line around the bottom portion of the screen. And as you can see, from 6 p.m. through about midnight into dawn patrol tomorrow morning, the blue line remains relatively steady. That's where we see, again, about a 40 to 50 percent coverage chance of clouds. So not perfect viewing conditions, but you might be able to see at least a few things out there uh, for the evening hours. Now, what can you take a look for when it comes to things like satellite pick, satellites flying overhead? Well, the Tiangong-2 space station will be flying overhead, but it's going to be relatively dim. So you may have to really look hard to see this. Northwest horizon by about 835, rising up to about 830. 38. That'll be going right through uh, the constellation just between Perseus and Triangulum from the northwest horizon, moving its way across the sky toward the north and east. And that will be going right through between the area of the uh, North Star Polaris and then also into and around the area of... Oh, hi, good to see you. My daughter Emma, by the way, just dropping by for a second. So everybody wave hi to her. As of right now... <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing again the uh, set the satellite again. This is the second Chinese space station as it passes overhead. This will be going through the handle of the Big Dipper, and that'll be fading at about 8:41 tonight. But once again, this is going to be very much on the dim side. Going to be very difficult uh, to actually see this. You notice the brightness, or what's called magnitude, in the column here. On your screen, satellite picture on the left, brightness, magnitude, the positive numbers, that is very relatively dim. You've got to get up to about where the Tiangong space station is, about a 1.8 in order to be able to just barely even see that. And that's where we're kind of running into the problems with this because of the fact that it is relatively dim. Now, later on tonight, take a look at the International Space Station. That is going to be a negative 3.4. That is going to be super bright. As you go into the negative numbers, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, we're getting up to the level of, say, planet Venus, planet Jupiter, uh, Sirius, the bright star in Canis Major that you can see around Orion during a good portion of time of the year. That is as almost as bright as you can possibly get, and that is going to be tonight uh, when the International Space Station flies overhead at about 842. That is going to be a super bright pass. You're going to be having a difficult time not to see this. The only problem is that as we see all this coming on through, uh, as it flies overhead, there's going to be cloud cover between us and the space station, so you might be able to see maybe a little bit of it between the clouds, but it might be kind of difficult to be able to see afterwards as well. So again, rising in the northwest following Tiangong 2. Again, it'll be rising at about 842 later on tonight. You should be able to see it on the northwestern side of the sky up toward the constellation of the W of Cassiopeia. Uh, usually a very good uh, constellation to find. It's called a circumpolar one. It's visible all the way through the year here in the northern hemisphere, at least where we are. And you can see, again, that is a very uh, bright constellation to be able to pick up. It'll be going just between the Big Dipper and uh, the North Star at about 845. So the northern sky, if you can find Polaris, the north star, should be able to see, again, that making its way on through. And then 
finally making its way toward around the area of uh, Coma Berenices. That again, hope I'm saying that right, that again will fade at about 846 or so, getting into around the area. Uh, just after that, it will go into Earth's shadow and you won't be able to see it anymore. So International Space Station at about 841 through about 847. Very bright, very difficult not to see this one tonight, but the cloud cover again could be just a bit of a problem out there. Uh, when it comes to anything else out there, let's take a look and see what's going on uh, into and around the area when it comes to iridium flares. Again, the communication satellites flying overhead won't be a good viewing until tomorrow at about 8.06. And this will be, again, in the southern part of the sky, uh, down toward around, <coughs> excuse me, Leo, the line between there and Cancer. Uh, that'll be at about 8.04 tomorrow night, not for tonight. So something to remember there, but we'll keep an eye on that. If you'd like to see more about what's going on out there, including information on uh, the total solar eclipse coming up in 2017, this is a great website to get more information. This is heavens-above.com, and there's tons of information on this website about what you can see, stars, planets, where the current probes are. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that uh, right now. Where are the spacecraft that are escaping the solar system? How far away they are? Which direction? they're going. You can see Pioneers 10 and 11. You can see Voyagers 1 and 2. You can also see the New Horizons spacecraft. It's very difficult to think that they are that far beyond the solar system. They've been going in some cases for 30 to 40 years, almost about as much time as I've been alive, believe it or not. So this is a great site to get tons of information about where these satellites are, what's overhead, amateur radio satellites, solar eclipses. You can also see a little bit more about what's going on when it comes to stargazing. Now, right now, sun's up, so it's difficult to see anything, but let's advance this uh, to about, let's say, 9.30 tonight and see what's going to be going on so we can get a pretty good idea as to what's happening out there. The moon will be just rising about that point in time down toward the uh, southeastern horizon. Jupiter will be up. It'll be right into the constellation of Virgo. And then very bright on the other side of things, Orion, Canis Minor, Canis Major, the, the star with Sirius in it, and a lot of the other constellations around Gemini, Taurus, and back up toward Auriga and Perseus with Mars sinking on the southwestern horizon. So you might be able to see that if you have a good telescope or uh, binoculars. Jupiter was beautiful this morning at about maybe 6 o'clock. You could see it over on the horizon. Horizon, uh, beautiful to take a look at, so a great opportunity to see more out there. Big news from NASA today about what's being found on other worlds. A big press conference was held today talking about what went on in the solar system with the probes that have been sent out into and around the area of Saturn, including Cassini. This one has flown very close to the moon Enceladus, and this one has the probe, Cassini, has found information that says that there is hydrogen out there along with carbon dioxide, which could mean that there could be uh, the basis for life around Enceladus and in, very other, in, in various other moons of maybe even the solar system extrapolating out from that. So very incredible to think that uh, this has been in fact found. Uh, huge jets of water vapor shoot up into space. Uh, incredible to see this happening out there. It's really incredible to take a look at. Uh, some of these surface jets jet hundreds of miles out across the surface and there could be a lot of other stuff going on down in that direction. So it could be very neat to see. Uh, Cassini is going to be doing uh, its grand finale in the next few months. It's going to be di diving into Saturn. Its time has come to an end. It's running out of fuel, sadly. Uh, the grand finale will be coming up in the next uh, several months, about September or so, but it will be doing one one last flyby of Titan, moon of Saturn, in the next few days, and it's going to come very close to the surface, maybe some of the best views that we have seen in and around Saturn and that area. So we are really looking forward to see uh, what goes on with this. So definitely want to stay tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised on that. Stay up to date with what's going on with my Facebook pages and all my social media pages. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash austinonicwreg, and also on Twitter at twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg. EG3, and we'll try to bring you as much information as we can, of course, coming up at News Channel 3's website at wreg.com slash weather, and we'll also bring you more information about what's going on uh, on News Channel 3 when it's big enough information to pass along to you. But in the meantime, keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Again, questions, comments, concerns, right here is where you want to go. Email address austin.onic at wreg.com. Live and direct.
direct from House Onik Backyard. We're on Periscope, Twitter, YouTube, and Google+. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, and we'll keep you updated on science and what's going on with astronomy. Just remember to keep looking up.